ESPN's Adam Schefter joins us thanks to Death Wish Coffee with the latest on Peyton Manning. Schefter, Schefter what do we know about the future of Peyton? Well, Armin Levesque, how you guys doing? It's Monday, yeah, and I would say right now what we do know is that the Broncos are not going to play nor even dress Peyton Manning for Sunday's game against the Chicago Bears. Peyton Manning will be out of uniform. They're going to give him this week to try to heal up from that plantar fascia injury. Uh, probably going to give him more time than that, but they're taking this on a week-by-week basis. So what we do know is that nothing is going to happen with Peyton Manning for at least another week, and at that time, Gary Kubek will sit down with Peyton Manning, reassess the situation, see where he's at. But I think we're going to see Brock Osweiler get a chance to see what he could do. And if he plays well, then I think Denver can stay with him, ride with him a little bit. If he struggles, doesn't come through, you let Peyton Manning get healthy. And when he's healthy, you try to bring him back. So the likelihood that Peyton Manning is done in Denver is, is not that likely yet. You're, we're not going there yet. Well, I, I, you're asking me to project out over the course of What's their record? Seven and two, oh. nine games, seven more regular season, it, probably a game, maybe two, maybe three in the playoffs, who knows. But they've got at minimum seven games left. And I think it's too early to say that he's, he's not going to play again. I'll say this. I don't think we're going to see him for a little while here. It, it's possible we won't see him for the rest of the season. I guess that's possible, depending on how he heals. Again, I think you know a couple of factors. How does he feel, first and foremost, and how does Brock Osweiler play? Because think about it like this. It's like when Tom Brady goes down or Drew Bledsoe goes down. They bring in Tom Brady. Well, when's Drew Bledsoe going to be ready for that injury that he suffered when Mo Lewis hit him? Well, probably, I don't know, three, four, five weeks, six weeks. Well, guess what? Tom Brady's playing well enough. We're not going back to Drew Bledsoe right now. So you just don't know. Like, there's uncertainty and mystery surrounding it right now. What we know is that Peyton Manning... Right now is sideline with plantar fascia. They want to give him time to be healthy. At the same time, I think they want to see what Brock Osweiler can do because he's headed into the last year of his contract. Peyton Manning, you have to figure maybe at the end of his line, who knows. So they need to figure out their quarterback situation short and long term. And I think by not playing Peyton Manning right now, that will give them a chance to get a little bit of clarity. Shefty, what was your biggest takeaway from the Giants' 27-26 to loss to the Patriots? Easily that Julian Edelman is going to be a player that they're going to really miss. When he went out of the game, yeah, they were still the Patriots, and they found a way to win the game, but there's only so many key losses that a team can withstand. And when he was gone, Tom Brady had to look downfield more because some of those shorter patterns and show more dependable routes with Julian Edelman were not there. And... They managed to win a game, but now in back-to-back weeks, they've lost Deion Lewis and Julian Edelman. Deion Lewis is out for the year with a torn ACL. Julian Edelman will be out indefinitely with the foot surgery that he had today. And so that, that, that's a problem for them now going forward, major problem. You, you know, you can lose some guys, but in a league that's something of a war of attrition, there's only so many huge key players that a team can withstand losing before it begins to take an effect on the field. ESPN's Adam Schefter thinks of Death Wish Coffee. Uh, Victor Cruz done for the year. What's the likelihood that the Giants let him go in the offseason, Schefter? Uh, listen, they're going to have to find cap space. He's got a big number. I think they'd love to bring him back. You know, you'd like to have a guy like that around your organization and program. He's meant a lot to them. But they've got a great young wide receiver in Odell Beckham. And you can't afford everybody. You just can't do it. I have to sit down and look at his cap numbers. And everything, but but I think it's a fair question to ask. Okay. I just don't have the answer for it right now. I got gotcha. you. Any update on Weston Richburg and the MRI done today on the high ankle sprain? Look, high ankle sprains are what they are. Yeah. They're, they're typically going to sideline guys about a month. Oh. Offensive linemen can probably come back sooner than that because they're not relying on their speed and quickness as much as a running back or a wide receiver. But the high ankle sprain, I've seen offensive linemen come back from high ankle sprains sooner than just about any other position. And Weston Richburg is a pretty tough guy, so if anybody could do it, he can. But, again, we'll have to see how that plays out as the week goes on as well. Shefty, I'm going to ask you, Like we've been having the debate today, who's a bigger loss to their team right now, Peyton Manning or Julian Edelman? No, oh, it's not even close. Julian Edelman's the bigger loss. Julian Edelman was as good as any wide receiver in the game. Peyton Manning, you know, he, five of his last six games, he's thrown multiple interceptions. Yesterday he had a zero quarterback rate. I mean, he's not making plays. Right. He's just not making plays. And you're asking me the question, 
you know, who in the prime of their career is better? Bill Peyton Manning's one of the greatest players in NFL history, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about, you're asking me, you know, who's going to be missed more by their team? Like, you know, the Denver Broncos want to see what Brock Osweiler can do. The Patriots don't want to see what their number two or three wide receiver can do. They want Julian Edelman. ESPN's Adam Schefter thinks of Deathwish Coffee. Schefter, your opinion of Wes Walker returning on Sunday, playing with the Rams with as many concussions as he's had in the past? Everybody gets to make their own choices. I've never been comfortable telling a player you know, or suggesting to a player when he should retire. I, you know, it always, uh, I always find entertaining when columnists or bloggers or analysts say, oh, this guy should retire. Well, no, 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 no. Everybody deserves to play as long as they want to play. It's their bodies and their brains and their decisions and their lives and their careers and they get to do it. If Wes Walker wants to come back and clearly he did, that's his choice. I don't that's fine. You know, he went through a battery of tests, they put him through a physical, he passed everything. But, you know, who, who are we to say to Wes Walker, you can't do this. No, don't do this. We're we're trying to protect you. Yeah, you know, he's a big boy. He gets to do what he wants. Shefty, we've got the uh the looks like the return of Tony Romo this Sunday. Cowboys will happen, yep. Yeah, okay, okay, so he is definitely coming back. Yeah, he's coming back Sunday. All right, two games back in the lost column in the East. Can they still win that thing? Yeah, it's amazing that nobody's been able to pull away. I would say that Dallas right now is two and seven. They haven't won a game with Tony Romo, without him, I should say. They won both with him, haven't won without him. Two and seven. Um, I think they're three back in the lost column right now. No, two, uh, two in the loss, three in the win. Yeah, two in the loss, three in the win. So, if you think that Tony Romo is going to lead this team essentially to a perfect record down the stretch, yeah. maybe 6-1 and one with a home game against Carolina, road games at Washington and Green Bay, if you think that they can go 6-1 and one minimum, yeah. minimum, yeah. Then, then they'll have a chance to win that division with some help from some other people. But so far... The rest of the divisions cooperated. Nobody's pulled away. Nobody has truly capitalized on the fact that Dallas has been without its quarterback. And so I, I don't dismiss it from happening. It's just going to be very, very difficult and challenging because of the hole the Cowboys have put themselves in. ESPN's Adam Schefter thinks of Deathwish Coffee. Speaking of wide open playoff races, Bills, Jets, take away from last Thursday, as in who do you like between those teams for the AFC wild card? Well, the Jets right now seem to be reeling a little bit, and Buffalo's playing good, strong football. Sammy Watkins can continue to get healthy, and they run the football like that, and Buffalo's going to be somebody that probably is going to compete for a wild card spot. Now, next week they have New England, but if there was ever a good time to get New England, I guess this probably will be it with Julian Edelman out and Deion Lewis out and the offensive tackles hurting. I mean, there aren't too many teams in the league that can lose their top three offensive tackles and still find a way to win a game on the road against a tough opponent like the Patriots can, but that's what the Patriots have done. And this would be a good time for Buffalo's defense to show up. They'll continue to try to run the football. And, you know, Buffalo, I think, has an advantage right now over the Jets with the head-to-head win. All right, Shefty, Monday Night Football tonight, Bengals, Texans. What, what's the, the key thing to watch in this game? What do we need to know? Well, the Bengals are unbeaten, so I think any time you get an unbeaten team at this point in the season, it becomes intriguing, and you want to see how they fare. Houston's played decent football Lately, DeAndre Hopkins has been a monster catching the football from Brian Hoyer, so we'll see how he fares. J.J. Watt, we all know what he can do. He can wreak havoc with anybody. But you know, the Bengals at home, playing the way they have, coming off a, a, a long week where they played two Thursday nights ago and haven't played since then. And what, what is that, uh, 11, 12 days? They, they, should be rare, they should be raring to go tonight. But, of course, I thought the same thing about the Green Bay Packers coming off two straight losses, pushing the Detroit Lions, who hadn't won in Green Bay in 8,700 days, and the Lions go in there and pull the upset. So in this league, you never know. Nobody, nobody saw that one coming, though, Shafty. You're, you're, you're on par with everyone else on that. Nobody saw that coming. Nobody <laughs> saw that coming, so that was outstanding. Yes, PN's Adam Shafter. Shafty, we uh, look forward to you and more tonight with the Inside Report uh, during halftime on Monday Night Football. Man, thanks so much for your time today. Good talking to you. Thanks, guys. Have a great Monday and enjoy the week. Yes, sir. You, you got, got it. it. There it goes. Too. ESPN's Adam Schefter thinks the Death Wish Coffee in Round Lake, Levac. They roast it. They make it. Everything right here in the Capital Region. True story. I was in Oklahoma City this weekend, and this guy starts talking to me about coffee. And I said, well, I just drink Death Wish. And he goes, oh! <gasps> 
I love Death Wish coffee. And I go, yeah, dude, it's like 10 minutes away, man. I grab K-Cups from them all the time. And he goes, I knew I should have gone into radio for free K-Cups from Death Wish coffee. <laughs> I, had, I had a similar experience. It was the first time I've ever been rude to someone involving Death Wish coffee. I, I'm sure I, the guys would love to know that. Well, I, I gave the information, okay? Oh, you're a diehard Death Wish guy? No, Screw I, I, was, I came out of, of Lake George after the Polar Plunge. I didn't change. I threw my, my Death Wish coffee hoodie on yeah. and i'm running for the car i've got my kid stuff under one arm my kid under the other and the guy goes hey death wish is it where can i get that i'm like dude i'm freezing go to Saratoga coffee trainers or go online at deathwishcoffee.com i'm sorry i have to go you just walked <laughs> away I running. I like, he's like i understand thank you but what? it was like normally i get in a little conversation but, but I you weaseled it in there though i did well you know he, he, dude needs his coffee i gotta help him out 